Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this month's installation of my Raspberry Pi series, I'm going to go over how to do some ways to help ease the capture process when using Wireshark and a new product I recently found called SharkTap, which is a very simple, very straightforward Ethernet tap to use when learning more how to do capturing and to see what's going on with your Raspberry Pi when you're doing various configurations with it. Here you go, but there's a couple of things we need to do, and we'll first start showing you what to do on the Mac. We'll go into System Preferences, click on Network. Now, in my case, since I'm using my MacBook Pro on wireless, then the Ethernet port is going to show Not Connected. What we'll do in this case to make this real simple is we will just set the configure IPv4 to off. That essentially turns off the IPv4 stacks. You're not going to see any ARPing, anything going on that you should have to filter in the capture. So you just click apply and you're ready to go. Now, if you don't want to do that, I'm just going to escape out of this and tell it not to apply. The other option is you can open up terminal window and you go in here and you see where I've already got highlighted the EN0 which for me is the wired Ethernet port and this is the MAC address. So what we can do is go back to our trusty companion Wireshark and go do a capture and a capture filter. And For those of you who haven't worked a lot with the, the difference between the capture filters and the display filter, the capture filter blocks it right out of the gate so it never even goes into the original capture file. So this is the stored capture filter that I use. Got it clearly labeled here as to what it is. And we start out with an exclamation ether which says, this whole phrase gets negated. We'll say host, and this is the MAC address. So that all the capturing I do, nothing should show up in the file to cause a problem. And we'll go over here to VMware Fusion, where we can do the same thing. You shoot an IP config forward slash all. Again, there's the MAC address that you can plug in to Wireshark, just like I showed you the other way. Now the other option you have from the Windows side and they show you on the Midbit Technologies website but since I'm doing this video I thought I would go ahead and put it in here as well so it was all in one file is we'll go into the properties for that adapter and once we get it to cooperate here let me go into properties just uncheck all those boxes and it does the essential same thing within Windows so that you don't have to do the capture filter. Again, it's just an option. The one thing I ran into while I was doing this is that parts of my network were still remembering that that MAC address had been seen out there. So I either had to wait for that MAC address to age out on the ARP tables or what I did since I have a, a test network, I just rebooted all the devices on the network, which in this case was just one switch, an unmanaged switch, and my internet router, and then that cleared the tables. And I could have, at least on one of the devices, cleared the ARP table with the disadvantage of an unmanaged switch, is I didn't have that functionality. So that's really all it took to, uh, to get things up and running. So hopefully this is been uh, of some help to you and will make uh, capturing a little bit simpler but definitely the uh, shark tap device is well worth uh, adding to your arsenal it's a good way to learn how to do initially with a ethernet tap much like the much larger versions that will do gig but there's the little port you see there is that's where you get the power from USB you'll plug it into your laptop or desktop so that's how you power the device a Pelican 1010 case is very ideally suited to uh, protecting this device when you're not using it so you know best place to get it the only place you can get it is Amazon and then you can find a link to the Midbit Technologies website gives you some information there as well this is one of the best tools that you can have in your arsenal and you will be seeing more from me in future posts where I show you on how I'm using the device as I do some of the different uh, captures as I'm running it 
through the different ways that you configure the Raspberry Pi. And this brings us to the end of another podcast. Appreciate everyone's time in watching this as well as reading the accompanying post that's on my website. To see the other videos I've done in the Raspberry Pi and other series and the articles that I've done with them, please visit my website at www.ronnutter.com. If you have any questions or have any requests you'd like me to look at in a future video, you can contact me uh, uh, via the uh, Contact Me button on the website, and I'll be glad to do what I can for you. Thank you again for your time.